All right. Well, uh, thanks to those of you who have braved the, uh, the full week to come in here at uh, kind of the last minute, at the end of a long week, and we appreciate you coming in to hear us talk about how to manage uh, cyber vulnerability in your connected medical devices. Uh, my name is Ron Markey. I am the Director of Technical Marketing and Customer Marketing for Clarity. And I'm Ryan Brotherton. I'm an Enterprise Architect with Corwell Health. Okay. So, um, Ryan, Ryan's here to do most of the, the heavy lifting, talking about uh, how we've implemented uh, in their environment. But before we get to that uh, specific solution that we partnered together on in order to uh, solve some of the uh, vulnerability issues at Corwell, I want to tell you a little bit about Clarity and what it is that we do. Clarity's overall mission is to secure the cyber physical systems that we depend on every day. You know, these are physical devices that are, in, in a lot of ways, not used to talking to the world, right? They're air gap, they're hidden. Uh, in a lot of cases, added into environments in which uh, uh, happens time over time and, and you lose track and lose control of what's actually out there. So anything though that integrates with uh, the physical and digital environment that allows some cyber activity to happen to those devices that may not have had that before is what we're concerned with. So we use a cyber security platform that delivers deep visibility into those cyber physical systems. Uh, whether it's OT, commercial, uh, health environments, we integrate with the IT tools and the uh, workflows that you already have and extend that, um, that bit of IT security control and those governances of those systems into that physical environment. So it's, it's easier to do that without it being just, oh, the plant's got to take care of that, and the IT's got to take care of that. It's let it work within your, your security workflow that you're currently doing. So we have a team of industry experts that leverage uh, a deep domain exper expertise that we've governed, uh, gotten from uh, hundreds of global customer deployments, and we use that to develop a tailored CPS protection strategy that's going to be based on your specific needs. So we're proud of our validation from industry experts and analysts, and of course, uh, with our strong strategic alliances, especially with AWS. Our SaaS platform leverages AWS as the, the cloud backend to deliver that scalable protection for all assets. Uh, both the SaaS and on-premise solutions that we have, the platforms, are going to integrate with AWS Security Hub and also the Amazon Security Lake and that will hopefully extend those security tools that you may already have existing in that environment uh, to add additional IT security monitoring and incident response controls that you may already have. <clears throat> of course, the key to any advanced CPS protection is going to start with visibility. Visibility and understanding the assets that you have is, is really the critical part to that. We leverage a combination of uh, a number of different agentless types of discovery methodologies to like deep, uh, passive deep packet inspection and also um, using safe queries with something we call Clarity Edge that communicates with those devices in their own native protocol and provides visibility into both the flatter healthcare uh, and commercial environments like you see here as well as those Purdue level OT environments uh, like you see here, those Purdue structures that are found in those implementations. Sensors in strategic places within those environments that don't break the Purdue rules, but allow that communication up to the level that is necessary to get it out into the cloud and, and, and uh, provide that, um, uh, again, visibility and understanding what is in that environment is what we have there. Once you have that foundation of visibility, the next steps are, of course, to uh, provide that ability to really identify the risks and vulnerabilities that are in those uh, systems, whether or not they're outdated firmware, whether it's something around the software, whether it is just uh, a, a component that, that has accessibility or network connections that it shouldn't have. You're able to have that visibility now as well. Enforce network controls with uh, production alignment uh, to the zone and policy recommendations that uh, come from those connections as well. Provide secure remote access into OT environments and healthcare now as well, uh, allowing internal as well as third party users sort of zero trust access uh, in order to do their jobs without um, using their own tools and 
coming in through a different access. And then finally to monitor for threats and anomalous activities that, uh, uh, that may be coming through that and see in, in the communication before they can become a problem and initiate some alerts with your, your SOC integrations. So simply put, the Clarity platform is highly adaptable, can be deployed across numerous industry sectors using either a SaaS service that we have called XDome or an on-premise solution that we call C uh, Clarity CTD, which is uh, continuous threat uh, protection or threat defense. It's going to deliver a, uh, a huge degree of insight into those cyber physical systems across a number of you know, all these industries that you see here, as well as uh, leading to great CPS visibility and the deepest CPS visibility in the market today, as well as the broadest solution set that we have uh, available as well. So that's Clarity's overall view, right? In time, as I'm starting to lose my voice. So our healthcare solution, which was previously called Medigate, uh, was purpose-built for healthcare, actually helped us to build a lot of the um, SaaS environment that we use in the industrial world now as well. But um, I'll turn that over. It's now called XDome. I'll turn that over to Ryan and let him tell you all about that. Thanks, Ron. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of the journey that Corwell Health has been on with the Clarity platform. Um, forgive me, I may call it Medigate because that's what I'm accustomed to referring to it as. Um, so just to get started, I want to give you some background into who Corwa Health is. Um, so we're a Michigan-based integrated health system. Uh, we're comprised of multiple care divisions, and we have a branded uh, coverage division as well, uh, which covers about 1.3 million lives uh, uh, across the state of Michigan. Um, Corwell Health was formed back in 2022 um, with the merger of Spectrum Health and Beaumont Health. Um, both of those organizations grew rather dramatically uh, through mergers and acquisitions over the prior 25 years. Um, currently have about 65,000 team members, uh, 21 hospitals across the state, uh, 5,000 licensed bed, beds, and over 300,000 connected network devices in the environment. So a reasonably sized uh, uh, network. Um, so I want to sort of give some background into how we approached um, the, the, the solving a problem with Medigate, Clarity X Dome. Um, we use a framework called the SBAR, uh, which stands for Situation Background Assessment and Recommendation. Um, the reason we do this is to make sure that we're um, being succinct uh, in the information that we're exchanging um, and that there's clarity of understanding into what problem we're actually trying to solve. Um, within the, the digital services or IT organization, we also use that framework to support decision making. Uh, make sure that the decision makers have the appropriate level of understanding for the decisions that they're making. Um, so I'm going to jump into the specifics of this uh, for you know, related to this talk. So back in 2023, while we were in the midst of um, integrating the Beaumont and Spectrum environments, we identified a problem. Uh, so a small group um, came together and really determined that we were lacking a trustworthy source of information of all of the connected devices in our environment. Um, and with that, it was really hindering our cyber team's responsiveness. So understanding that we, you know, understanding that problem, understanding that we, we knew we were, our, uh, that our, our cyber responsiveness was impacted, we wanted to be able to explain how we got here. So, you know, the background was, you know, within healthcare, I'm assuming many of you work in healthcare organizations, um, the organic growth of, and the digitization of healthcare has been dramatic over the last number of years. The proliferation of devices in our environments um, seems as if it's never going to stop. Um, and then there's the additional complexity of various mergers and acquisitions. Um, and you know, back to that integration, our landscape had doubled overnight. We roughly doubled in size um, with the integration of those two health systems. So moving on, we wanted to assess what the options were for us to help address this problem. Um, we needed to understand uh, what we could do to, to fix the situation that we we're within. Uh, within part of the organization, we did have a CPS platform. Um, there was that option to extend that platform to the entirety of the organization now. Um, 
but it was identified that there were significant operational burdens associated with that particular system. Uh, we knew that the CPS uh, market was changing, it was evolving. Um, there was a lot of consolidation. There has been a lot of consolidation in the market, as Ron mentions, um, with, with Clarity's acquisition of, of Medigate. Um, and we were confident that by looking at the entirety of the industry, the new, the new landscape, um, that it would give us an opportunity to take a fresh look at our problem and the solutions associated with it. So it was agreed upon, agreed upon by the team to uh, go in and explore all the options available to us within the CPS market. Um, in order to do that, we wanted to establish a set of success criteria to, to evaluate those options. Um, ultimately, the recommendation uh, by leadership was accepted, and we embarked upon a product evaluation exercise. Um, and one key point was we were taking a look at this from a greenfield perspective. So, you know, the first step in that was, uh, before we engaged with solution providers, was to define um, key success criteria. We chose to use the Pew method. Um, it's a it's a method, a qualitative technique to uh, to rank uh, multi-dimensional options. Um, but what's up on the screen right now are the key criteria that we wanted to see addressed as we progressed. Um, we needed pervasive and comprehensive discovery. Uh, we needed to make sure that we were able to categorize a broad set of devices in our environment. Uh, we wanted to be certain that we could integrate with existing systems, existing tooling. Um, that already existed in the environments, right? Namely, CMDB, our network control systems, our EDR platform, um, and additionally, we needed something that was going to scale to the new organization size. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier the uh, the operational burdens that were associated with one of the incumbents. We wanted to make sure that those operational burdens that we were experiencing were not going to be something we experienced in the new world as well. So, you know, we. Through this exercise and ranking the top three solutions from our perspective, we determined that Clarity X Dome was the right fit for our organization. Um, so you know, moving forward, once we had that decision, we needed to scope and plan. And we did that directly with Clarity. The team was amazing to work with. We transitioned from sort of that sales phase into um, the planning and execution phases seamlessly. Uh, we had internal partnerships to find inside of the organization in the back through the SBAR process where we were framing the problem. Um, it included our cyber defense and orchestration teams, our network infrastructure teams, as well as our facilities management because there are some components uh, when it comes to CPS systems um, that do require on-premises uh, components. So, the desire um, was that we wanted to have the visibility into our assets. So we needed to look at the entirety of our network infrastructure. We needed to plan out where those physical devices to begin capturing the network traffic, the network telemetry to provide the clarity to do that analysis needed to be placed. So first and foremost, understanding our network topology was key. Um, we identified the key aggregation points uh, as well as the key service locations um, that were important to us to make sure that we had the pervasive visibility that we desired. Um, you know, I'll, I'll mention as well, we procured through the AWS Marketplace, uh, which was painless, and it has the added benefit of contributed to any spending commitments that you have uh, with AWS, so we took advantage of that. Um, so, moving into the architecture itself and the implementation, um, from our perspective, the architecture of the Clarity X Dome solution is incredibly simple. Um, it, our deployment was quick, uh, painless, seamless. Um, through the planning process, we had identified where the hardware needed to, play, needed to be placed. So, honestly, the scheduling logistics of getting people to facilities where systems needed to be installed was the most complicated part of it. Um, you know, like Ron mentioned, uh, it is a SaaS service. That's how we look at it. All of our interactions are with the web portal that's provided for us by Clarity. Um, all of our integrations are done through that web portal. All of the analysis that we do um, directly with the platform is through that web portal. Um, so in that planning process, 
having identified where the solutions needed to be placed, again, that was the hard work. That was the hardest part in all of this was the planning. Um, we ended up identifying the need to place about 40 sensors across our environment, which may not seem like a lot to gain all the visibility that we ultimately uh, decided we needed. Um, and it was, it was great. So we're gathering all of the traffic through span ports uh, within data centers, within campus environments, within our DMZ, again, back to those key aggregation points and service demarcation points. Um, you know, you, we thought through what are the key services that all these medical devices rely on, uh, focusing on things like DHCP, DNS, um, and we wanted to make sure that that's where we were getting all the telemetry from. So the placement, um, that we have has given us full visibility into the entirety of our environment. Um, I just, so far today, our successes um, have been, a, you know, a measurable enhancement in the understanding of our inventory uh, and confidence in its accuracy. Uh, we spot check assets uh, within clinical settings, within um, you know, the, the campus, uh, the, the work worker settings, just to make sure that things are accurate. Uh, and, and, it, and it has been. Um, we have demonstrated measurable improvements in our security posture um, through, that uh, through that focused inventory, right? We know that we have that detailed information and we trust it. And we've also, we're also demonstrating measurable uh, boost to the efficiency of our uh, cyber defense response teams. Uh, the KPIs that we publish are, are showing that and we can read out uh, the value to the, to the organization. So we know we're not done. Uh, we know there's more that we need to do. We've done a large number of integrations, um, but we're continuing to plan out integrations into the tools in the environment because we really want to make sure that we have absolutely everything available to us um, you know, in order to you know, check the posture of the, of the landscape. Um, looking forward, we want to um, integrate, uh, we're already integrated within the network infrastructure, but we want to leverage the data that exists in the XDome platform to make informed network segmentation decisions. That's up and coming. Um, we're really excited with what we've seen so far, uh, but we have not completed that. Uh, and then finally, uh, there's something that I'm interested in exploring. It is uh, reading out medical device usage insights. Um, the platform will give your care teams or your, your hospital operations teams insights into uh, utilization of modalities, for instance, so that perhaps the organization can make better informed decisions on life cycling of medical devices. Uh, not something we've done today. Um, I've, I've witnessed what it can do. We just need to plan through um, how we interact with the business to provide them that data. Thank you. So the uh, yeah, just Sorry. one second. Not quite thing. Just a couple of a couple of quick things on that. I mean, one of the things is the flexibility of the platform to allow that. It, there's a lot to it, right? I mean, part of it is getting the visibility, understanding what you have, and then those next steps, like you're talking about utilization. People don't don't think about that that much. But I mean, how often is an infusion pump actually used? Uh, how much does an arm, MRI? You know, if you have you're not going to go out and buy a new MRI because you have uh, one that you think is being overutilized. You can see exactly what the utilization is. So it's, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions, uh, we do have uh, a booth, number 486, just right around the corner here. We have uh, both the medical and the industrial uh, X-Dome demo platforms available for you to see. Uh, so please come by, come and see us. Thanks, Ryan, for, for joining me here. I hope. Uh, uh, you all enjoyed uh, what you what you've seen and got a little bit out of it, and uh, we'll we'll hopefully see you uh, around the corner. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.